Hello and welcome to the Basketball Addicts Podcast. Where we answer the question, the question that everybody wants to know. It's the worldwide, world-renowned question, the question that we always answer. Is how you can hate from side of the funnels? You can't even get in. How can you hate from outside the funnels? We can't even get in. How can you hate? Because listen, we're getting closer. The finals are approaching. That's true. It's possible. It's very possible that, you know, the last game could be played, you know, on Friday, and then we'll be going right into the Eastern Conference Finals. That's the finals. Who's going to make it? Who's going to be left out? Who's going to win these series that's coming up? Tune in. You're about to find out our predictions. Because guess what? We've been right. Majority of this front, majority of this playoffs, we've been right. Mm -hmm. You can go back, check the film, check the clips, check the audio. We've been right. Yes. Boston beating Brooklyn. Whether Jason wanted to, you know, admit it or not, <laughs> it happened. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. <laughs> that happened, okay? Memphis beating beating Minnesota. That happened. Um, Joel and B coming back on the third game and winning. That happened. That happened. You go back and check the audio. This was all said here. If you're new, welcome. If you're old, welcome. We miss you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into this. So, Jay, you got any comments you want to make before we get into it? Um, yeah, I, I guess you know we've been we've been doing some growth lately on TikTok. It's really big. We're really excited about it. And if you're a new listener from TikTok, and you know you guys are joining into our podcast right now, uh, we're happy to have you. We're gonna take you on the ride. We're gonna give you great content. It's what we do. We're a growing podcast. Welcome to the community. So. It's a fun time. Fun time to be the basketball addicts. Podcast. One of us. One of <laughs> us. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I think that the most pressing issue, Jay, right, okay. that we need to discuss right now is right. John Morant and the Go- John Morant, the Memphis Grizzlies, and the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. Was did you did you see that play? Yes, the I knee? did. What? What are your thoughts? I think the fact that people are saying it's dirty is crazy. I mean, Joel Jordan Poole doesn't do anything egregious. He doesn't jump for his leg, knees, legs, like we've seen Marcus Smart do the people beforehand. You know, Zaza Pachulia stepping under Kawhi Leonard's feet. You know, things like that that's happened. Draymond Green deciding to kick everybody uh, that named was LeBron James. You know, it's <laughs> one of the egregious things yeah. in NBA history. And this is just not one of them. This is just a normal basketball play. Jordan Poole really didn't even try to dive at the ball. He was just like trying to get in there. It was uh, anybody who's saying that he caused that injury or it was dirty. Uh, they're just overreacting because people hate Draymond Green and hate the Warriors for some reason. You either hate or like the Warriors. That's the way it is. Yeah. Um. So my take on that is like. It's very hard to tell because it happens so quick. Like, they have actual, like, cut the clip of just the injury, right? So, like, I think it's him and another player. I think it might have been... Wiggs. Yeah, it was Wiggs. Yeah, it was Wiggs. And they're, like, they trap Ja, right? And and the ball is loose. And Ja goes for the ball. Jordan Poole is, like... But Ja kind of, like, has kind of, like, slight control of it a little bit with Mm -hmm. one hand. And, like, Jordan Poole is trying to grab the ball. But he grabs yeah. his knee and yanks it. But I'm like, at that point, that's not basketball play anymore. I don't think he yanked it though. It looked. Like I think he, he just had it. I I I think you could take a picture where his hand is on his knee, but I just didn't see Ja Morant's knee move in a direction, any way to indicate that jo- Jordan Poole was really pulling at it. I just think yeah. that there's going to be some pictures out there where he has his hand on it. But it would be different if he like just like gladiator style just grabbed his kneecap and just yanked it out of his body. Like I don't, it's not, it's not what that. If would, he you know? did a uh, what, what is what is the guy's name who he plays for? He he injured Kevin Love. He ripped his sh- 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 arm. Oh, the Kelly Olynyk, that dirty. It wasn't a Kelly Olynyk thing. It wasn't a Kelly <laughs> no. Olynyk thing. That was one of the dirtiest plays I've ever seen. It was so obvious. Like what? Did the, yeah, you did not need to do that at all. Marcus he held onto his arm with both and pulled. <laughs> yeah, um, that that Boston team can sometimes walk that line of between yeah. dirty and normal. So it is what it is over there. 
but you know, for those of you who may not agree or disagree with what we said, as far as like if it being dirty or not being dirty, I'm merely not even gonna say it's dirty. Jason doesn't say it dirty. I'm just saying that it didn't look like a basketball play to me. But I, you know, I don't think it was. I don't think it was actually dirty. I think he might have actually been going for the ball, and it might have been accident. But at mm-hmm. that point, it draws a thin. It's a thin line between basketball and not yeah. basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was a tightrope type of move. I mean, I don't think he's gonna get in trouble for it because it's done mm-hmm. and over with. But the big point of this is that. John Mayer may not play game four. Yeah, that's that's this, this series is a wrap. It's it's over. Um, there's nothing else the Grizzlies can do without Jaw and Dylan Brooks. I do want to say Dylan Brooks getting taken out for two games. That's a little egregious. Um, I think the, the NBA should be a little pit. Of, nah, I don't even think that was like a severe technical. Um you know, I, I would say that's like a tech one, in my opinion. I don't think that deserved to be a tech two completely kicked out of the game because he was going for the ball. He just did it in a very, very bad way. In um, a very aggressive way, yeah. Yes, um, where it, it did endanger the player that he was doing it to. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Which which is why the NBA was protecting him. But, you know, I think the Memphis-Golden uh, State Warriors games have just been... Um, you know, some calls have been iffy. Sometimes the whistle would lean to jaw and sometimes the whistle lean the Golden State. But one thing that I've seen is with that 142 point game the Golden State Warriors had, there is a different gear that the Warriors can hit. There's just nobody else can hit. That game three game, I watched that, man. It, it just looked like a track show. It looked like we were just so having so much fun. It looked so easy for the Warriors. When they play, they just they have a certain gear that nobody in the NBA playoffs can match offensively. And I think this is going to go five games. And I, I it's a good series for the Grizzlies. They came far. You have things to look forward to for the next year. You got a lot of improving players. Zaire Williams, John Morant. Jaron Jackson, Dylan Brooks, uh, Desmond Bain, all good young players, but you met a veteran team and you met a good team that has a lot of talent. And another thing I want to say about the Warriors is I love the fact that they, Steve Kerr, literally gets 30 minutes a game out of Clay Thompson, Jordan Poole, and Steph Curry, and they played two positions. That means between those two positions, there could be a hundred and let me see here. No, 96 minutes between the two those two positions that could be on the floor. What I mean by that mm-hmm. is, you know, point guard can play 48 minutes in a game. Shooting guard can play 48 minutes a game. Put those two together, 96 minutes. Jordan Poole, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry play 90 minutes combined. Now, are there some minutes where there's like five minutes where Jordan Poole, Steph Curry, and Clay Thompson are on the floor? Yeah, sure. But just, I want to give a lot of credit to Steve Kerr for getting Jordan Poole on the floor enough because he's the third best player in the team Mm -hmm. and you know ball movement player movement it's it's the time of the 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 time of the nba right now and uh chris do you want me to talk about my ball ball movement player movement um segment or do you want me to save that a little bit i feel like that's a perfect segue um go ahead because you were already in that you were already in that zone so go ahead and just give it to me Okay, so my opinion is we're witnessing a, a time shift where we're going back in time in the thought of basketball and mm. the way basketball is played. So five okay. years ago, everybody misinterpreted what the Warriors were great at. Everybody's like, we got to chuck up a crap ton of threes and not play efficient basketball. Look at the Houston Rockets. Look at teams like the Sacramento Kings. Look at teams like the Indiana Pacers right now. The Dallas Mavericks when they had Luke, when Luka and Rick Carlisle was there. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of teams that adopted the, we're just going to hack up a ton of threes, and something nobody really noticed, and what should have been the something that people mirrored, was the movement. Mm. Nobody does a better job of off-ball movement passing like i was reading steve kerr's book and his goal was to lead the league in passing and double their passing stats from martin mark jackson mark jackson was there to when he was there and he did it right so it's it's about 
ball movement, player movement. It's infectious. It's the way of winning basketball. And this is stuff that's been around since like the 1960s with John Wooden and the UCLA Bruins where they preach player movement and ball movement. Look at Red Arback. Look at those old Celtics teams. Look at all the ball movement they had. They ran a ton of off-ball screens where Bill Russell has the ball. Here comes Sam Jones off-ball. Here comes Bob Cousy off-ball. Like this has been the way basketball has been played at a winning level, at a high winning level for a long time. Look at the triangle offense. Michael Jordan, player movement, body movement, Shaq, Kobe. These guys had movement, right? Mm -hmm. And Greg Popovich, movement, right? All all the off-ball stuff, all the off-ball actions. Yeah, so it's coming back where NBA is starting to replicate it, and you look at the best teams. Look at the Suns. They move the ball like crazy. CP3, great player. Look at that team and can't you cannot tell me that they do not resemble a 1990s team. They got a mm-hmm. great point guard that plays great ball possession basketball. They're so tough to beat. They got a post big. They got two forwards that can defend. They really value defense. And they got that one guy on the team that no matter what, he can go get us a bucket. I guarantee yeah. you if you looked at the Portland Trailblazers or the Utah Jazz, they would be built in similar ways. And and we're also seeing look at look at um and it's either done by that or one individual player like Luka Doncic. Great passer, great operator of an offense, efficient looks, passing is valued. Look at Giannis. Imagine if Giannis couldn't pass. He'd be so easy to stop. But why is he so dominant? Because he passes the lights out, the basketball. It's a hard basketball style to stop. Look at the Boston Mm -hmm. Celtics. Look at the growth they made. Imo Doka used to be on the bench for Greg Popovich. He used to be his assistant coach. A very, they move the ball a lot more. Look, go look at the East and look at the Miami Heat. Look at the, all the ball movement they have. Look at all the off ball screens. You see Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero. And defense at an elite level is being played with teams that are great in the NBA. The Warriors are a great defensive team. The Miami Heat are phenomenal. Look at the Boston Celtics defensively. Look at the Suns defensively. So we're witnessing basketball transition back in time to an area to an age where ball movement player movement and defense was the winning factors and that's Mm. what we're seeing this year it's you can't tell me that there's a single team in the nba playoffs that just jacks up threes who does it who says oh we're just going to statistically jack up all these threes nobody Mm -hmm. plays that way and is in the nba playoffs right now and look at look at look at the brooklyn nets Look Look at the lack of passing. Look how much that was exposed. Look at all the yeah. talent they had on that team. They don't play movement basketball. They don't play as a group. They they were come from the Mike D'Antonio teaching of let's jack up shots, ISO basketball. And mm-hmm. player movement, team movement works for multiple reasons. It, it gets everybody involved. It gets everybody wanting to play defense because they feel involved. And it makes things easier for your stars to get yeah. easier baskets so they don't have to carry all game long. So that's what I've been thinking about lately. It's just so obvious that these teams play beautiful basketball, and it's coming back. We're witnessing a throwback era of the NBA. That was eloquently put, Jay. Eloquently put, <laughs> man. For sure. That was, hey, hey, if that don't make you want to stick around to the, and listen to more episodes, I don't know what would. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what 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 would. That was that was a great breakdown. I want to say something, but I just want you. To, I just want to bask in the moment. So we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on because I completely agree with everything you said. We've talked about this on the phone, so you know my yeah. thoughts already. So just yeah. wow. <laughs> I got something later on. Just wait for it. Okay. I gotta match this. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds um, like a pet. Oh. So go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Anything else you want to talk about the Warriors or the Memphis Grizzlies before we move on? No, that was that was perfect, my guy. Great <laughs> ending to that. Like great segue, great ending. Perfect. It was huge. Um <laughs> so uh let's look at the next um team in the West. Dallas <sighs> Phoenix. Phoenix. Now for our TikTok followers, you know that we <laughs> posted a video about me saying that 
Luka Doncic is going to hit a level. He's going to rise to the occasion. Great players do this. They have to. They rise to the occasion and they overcome great odds. I mm-hmm. said that the Dallas Mavericks have a chance of winning. Somebody in our comments said they're down 2-0. <laughs> Sir, it's two two. <laughs> I don't want to say I was right, <laughs> but but I was right. <laughs> Jay, what you got for me, man? Uh, well, man, when I think about this series, it's we're wa- we're witnessing. I mean, did you see that Luka Doncic was? I think he now. I don't know if he still has it, but. Before game four, a- he overtook Michael Jordan for the most points per game in like playoff history. Um, yeah, just, he's a point guard. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> and I, I just it's 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 a unique situation where we, we're witnessing a guy carrying. Let's be honest here, a crappy team. That that team would be a top five pick without Luca. And I do we even really have to break it down? The best player in the team would be Spencer Dinwiddie, um, <laughs> and Luka or Doncic. Brunson. Yeah, it, it'd be a, one of those two. Luka Doncic is so spectacularly amazing in his ability to score and such tough shot, t- such great tough shot maker. He, every shot he shoots is a tough shot because he has no athleticism, so everything has to be perfect. Right? He perfects his unblockable moves and you know he's such a beautiful passer he plays the game the right way um and what we're witnessing is a guy that's really making that case to be a top three top five best player in the nba this is i mean how how much can you deny it where it's like this guy averages like 28 9 and 5 in the regular season like at the point guard position to play such an efficient, beautiful style of basketball where he just reads defenses and carves people up. So mm-hmm. I, you know, you, you might, after this series, even if they lose, I think he might be the best point guard in the world. Uh, I, I, I think it's, it's him and uh, the Phoenix suns. This is a good team. I don't think they're going to get beat by Luca. If Luca pulls it off, it's going to be amazing. But I think the Suns team basketball is too good. Um, you know, I'm like what I'm seeing from DeAndre in post wise. He's definitely developed skill, and you know they do they play beautiful team basketball. You know, I think Monty Williams is a top five NBA head coach, and uh, I think they're gonna win. It's just Luca's putting on a show, man. Yeah. Um. One thing I will say is one thing that I can kind of do as a comparison for Luca. Would be like you can compare that Dallas Mavericks team and like to like the Cavs of old, <laughs> kind of yeah. a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. because Le- LeBron did exactly that. I think that Luca's reaching the level and he's showing us that he's reaching the level where he's gonna be like he's gonna t- he's gonna take one of these. He's gonna take either this team or a team in the future to the finals, and he's gonna do that oh. consecutively with with nothing. But the only difference between him and LeBron is that. The GM, I mean, the owner of the team, Mark Cuban, will dig deep into his pockets and give Luca yes. what he wants, and, get, and give him and give him help. Yes, <clears throat> they need the they, other two pieces in the front office to be good. Would they mm-hmm. already have the head coach? They just need a GM that cannot trade Spencer Dinwiddie for Kristaps Porzingis when your best player is a point guard, and then we might get somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was a big problem. Um, <laughs> but just looking at the game today. Mm. Um, it was hard fought. I mean, Jalen Brunson, of course, showed up. Luka yes. Doncic showed up. I think that no matter what happens in this series, we're going to look at the Dallas Mavericks team a lot differently. Um, because as long as those two guys, Luka and Jalen Brunson, even though you know I didn't know who he was before, you know, before his forty forty one point explosion <laughs> against Utah, insane. Insane. Um, as long as th- those two can still, you know, can 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 score at a high efficient level, yeah. then this, this this series is not over. I think that it really just takes though. It's it like we we can't say. I mean, Luca doesn't have help, but as long as he has just a little bit of help in Jalen Brunson, then they could they might still be able to take the series. In my opinion, uh, yeah. Phoenix Phoenix does have a great team. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen that Chris Paul can do it all. Yes, we have to. 
I said it last podcast. I'm gonna say it again. We have to put respect on Chris Paul's name. Yes. Like we have to. We yes. honestly have to. Like mm-hmm. he literally wheeled his team and scored what 18 or 14 or 18 straight points to seal the game yeah. against uh me in the last round. Yeah. Like he had a great stretch. It was a Pelicans. great play like, to in the to end the series. Like mm-hmm. That was a winner go home game. Devin Booker was coming back off injury, so he was like he was it was like his second day being injured or something like that, and he came back. So it was he wasn't really at full strength. He shouldn't have been playing, but he played anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I agree. I agree to an extreme extent that this is a good series. You know, Luka Jancic is carrying um that Mavericks team and I really I really feel like they're one good wing away. And I've been seeing that some people are talking about how hard it's going to be to build around Luka because he dominates the basketball. And I just want to say that in the name of Kobe Bryant, if those other people are not working, why am I passing it? Like, like, like <laughs> remember we talked about Smush Parker? Yeah. You know, <laughs> 2006, 2007 well, I mean, season. Yeah. He wasn't passing to nobody. Luka Doncic's got nobody other than guards, right? Other guards that need the ball in their hand to be effective. If he had Jason Tatum, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, you know, you know my name's Luka Doncic. I'm just not going to pass to these guys, even though I'm one of the best passers in the NBA. Makes no sense, okay? So yeah, uh, I want to put that to rest. All you need is wings. Wings, 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 wings that can ISO score or give you a solid 20 to 25. And we'll be cooking with sauce here pretty quickly with the Dallas Mavericks. He's he's entering Larry Bird status for sure. With his yeah. underrated passing ability for sure. High high IQ, great at scoring. I mean, that's just that's what he's he's entering that status. I, I think you could compare uh, Giannis and Luca to Magic and Bird to an, a certain extent. I wouldn't say they're, you know, we saw Magic and Bird, uh, you know, peak out 29, 30, 28, right? So we haven't seen these guys fully peak out yet. So don't like come at me yet because yeah. I'm just going to say this now. Luka Doncic and Giannis Antetokounmpo right now are not better than what Larry Bird and Magic were at their peak yet. Okay, they're not there yet. But I'm just saying that eventually one day they will be, and this will be a good conversation to talk about. Even though they might not play in the NBA Finals a ton because Luka doesn't have a ton of talent, and Giannis's talent is going to age out in like two to three years. So yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting... Uh, dynamic they would be one number two dear goodness could you imagine them on the same team yeah Luka Doncic and Giannis on the couple that's cheating Luka, like, that is bro, cheating the passing the uh, they are literally like exact opposite Luka's like this slow methodical gifted highly skilled guy in the perimeter yeah. and Giannis is like this I am so ridiculously gifted human being like it'd be crazy, bro. Yeah, That'd I think Giannis crazy. would have to come to Dallas because I think I think Dallas and Luca is a good pairing. Mark Mark Cuban, you're right. Mark Cuban, and they got the head coach right. Jason Kitt's a really good head coach. So yeah, it's it's a he's a he's a unique player, man. Unique, <clears throat> one of a kind for sure, for sure. Um, man. Oh, oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So. The Phoenix game, right? Just one last thing on Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Chris Paul fouled out. They won. They Dallas was able to even the series. Chris Paul is really an integral part of that team. Like he, yes. he makes the he makes he makes the game so easy. Yes, that system's built everybody. around him. Yeah, all that movement, all the player movement, is to just give Chris Paul easy looks, easy, easy mm-hmm. just like make things a little easier on him. Like it, it, they just it's a match made in heaven between Monty and CP3. They're so connected. Yeah, because I think he had him as a coach before. Yeah, I think so, too. Okay, now moving on to the East. Yes, sir. Should we talk 76ers? You choose. All righty. 76ers heat. Talk to me, Jay. Um, this series is over. It's just eventually going to happen. I don't think that uh, the 76ers can make this comeback. Miami Heat have home court. They have more talent. Um, I think when you're missing two games of Embiid, it's just unrealistic. Uh, I think 
the the joyful thing is watching Joel and B try to overcome, right? I'm sure he's going to put on some great performances and show why I think he's a top three player in the NBA. Um, and we need to put more respect on his name. He should have been an MVP. The guy had a historically re- relevant season at the center position. Um, so, you know, the 76ers, James Harden's pretty stamped on me for me to think that either this is what he is, is going to be for the rest of his career, which is like a good 20 to 8 player for the next two years or it's just an injury that's nagging but he's definitely lost some explosiveness uh but tyrus max is really special especially off guard where he doesn't have to have to make every decision mentally he doesn't have to overthink things all the time he's a really good fit there um he's he's got a lot of potential uh he's so gifted speed and quickness wise he's a very underrated defender um but, you know, the 76ers are not ready to beat the Miami Heat down two, um, even though the Suns 76ers won one game. And the Miami Heat are really, really, really impressing me. Um, they had won a anemic game last game where they looked really terrible on offense, which scares me. So, you know, I'm going to have to really watch more of the series to make sure I'm correct about this. But... You know, one thing that scares me before I talk about it is Tyler Hero is not getting enough minutes. He's not playing more than 30 minutes a game. He's the second best scorer on the team. You know, I've talked about it before. I just don't think it's impossible for a guy to not play the first six minutes of the game and the first six minutes of the second half and get the minutes that he needs to be the second best scorer on the team, on a team that could use a score like that. They could bail him out of bad possessions. Oh, we've been rotating the ball. Now we have five seconds. Like, kick it to Tyler and he'll create something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Um, you need guys like that on your team, but the Miami Heat can win the NBA Finals. I'm just gonna come and say it. I've heard Kendrick Perkins say this, and I've said it earlier before. This is very reminiscent of the 2004 Detroit Pistons, where they. I know everybody's talking about the Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics best defense in the league. Best defense in the league. Best defense in the league. This is the best defense in the league. You have the best center in the NBA. Bam Adebayo puts a defensive clinic. On every night. And, you know, a nice little comparison. Bam out of bio is kind of like 95% of Bill Russell. Like, is switchable, really freaky athletic, six foot nine, six foot ten, block shots, smooth, great quicks, good passer. Uh, that's a little side note there. Uh, it's a pretty interesting comparison. Uh, but he's ridiculous. He's so ridiculously special defensively. It's a clinic. He makes good passes. He's really athletic. Uh, Jimmy Butler's a ridiculous defender. PJ Tucker's a ridiculous defender. They have Kyler Lowry back now. He's a good defender, you know, and they got Victor Oladipo now too as well. Good defender. So this team's the best defensive team in the league, in my opinion. And offensively, Beforehand, I was like, man, they have a great defense, but they just can't hit the high level of offense and have the consistency in the high scoring games to win in a seven game series because you need scoring, right? You need to score to a certain level. Victor Oladipo is the X factor. If Victor Oladipo can have 12, 10 to 15 points per game, this team can win the NBA Finals. And surprise a lot of people. A lot of people are writing them out. I've heard people like JJ Redick and people on ESPN say the Eastern Conference Finals is happening between the Bucks and the Celtics. I disagree. I really think that the Miami Heat are a tough matchup because when you add Victor, now Victor and Tyler Hero can equal a 30 point per game score. Now they can cancel out Jason Tatum scoring wise. And then Jimmy Butler could cancel out uh, uh, Jalen Brown. Right, and then you have Bam, you have Lowry, you have Strauss, you have Gabe Vincent, you have all these ridiculous amount of players. This team's very deep, and if Victor Oladipo, because it's his game was based off of athleticism, his burst is there. You can really see him make athletic moves, and that should scare everybody else in the NBA. And I really feel like they're hitting a new tier as a team because of it, and now they're healthy. They haven't been healthy a lot of the season. Now they are actually legitimately healthy now that Lowry's back. So he's, he takes away the little things from Jimmy Butler. Let's just let him score. Um, this, I I love the heat and what I'm seeing. So that's my takeaway from this specific series with the Miami Heat in general. Um, <clears throat> I would have to agree with you completely. I said heat in five. Um, Joel Embiid, 
he came back. I don't think it's gonna make too much of a difference. They may take another, so I'm I'm gonna say maybe five or six if they mm-hmm. take this game because they're about to play, they're playing right now, mm-hmm. or they're about to start playing soon. Um, but I think the big thing that we have to touch on, in my opinion, because I completely agree with everything you say, is James Harden. Um, the story of the Philadelphia Sixers is Joel Embiid. But the other story is James Harden. We have to acknowledge the fact that you're right. He may or may not be the same player anymore. Mm-hmm. And we we're no, we know him not to show up, you know what I mean, in these big moments. This was one of the first big takes I've made, you know, at the start of the playoffs, and I was laughed at for it. <laughs> he does not show up in the big <laughs> moments. Mm-hmm. I was, he does not show up in the big moments, and it's been proven because with, with him, with Joel and beat out, I mean, he, he, he disappears. You know, he's not the same player. He's not the same. He can't put the team on his back like he used to. If mm-hmm. we still were getting like the, oh, 60 point triple double James Harden plus Joel Embiid, then this is a totally different team. I would call the Sixers yeah. a winner, you know, legitimately. Yeah. They probably will be up right now, you know, mm-hmm. up 3 0, but about to sweep. But that's not the case anymore. Mm-hmm. We have to acknowledge that, you know, he, he lost some athleticism. He's not the same player anymore at all. Um, but like I said, the bright spot is Joel Embiid. So Joel Embiid, he's still, in my opinion, still one of the best centers in the league, and he has the he has the possibility to take over this series. I mean, it's just a yes. face mask right now, and he plays again tonight. He played yesterday. When he play when he plays, they win. So I mean, it's gonna be a tough fault series. So it really can go either way. But I do want to stick with my original assessment of Heat and Five. Um, the Heat, though, very surprising. Very, very, very surprising. They were surprising last year. They're surprising mm-hmm. this year. It's just very surprising. It's kind of weird for me, okay? Because I'm going to take it back a little bit so I can make mm-hmm. sense of where I'm going with the weirdness. 2020, Lakers won the championship. He, Miami Heat, Lakers, champ, um, NBA Finals in the bubble, right? Mm. Tyler Hero, we were looking at him. Oh, man, he's going to show up. This is the guy for the future of the Heat. Yes. Next season, he disappears completely. Mm-hmm. Where is Tyler Hero at? Right. This season, complete reemergence. And I would say that's just a consistency thing on the team's part. I mm-hmm. don't know. That's what kind of scares me is that he like he disappears for seasons. It's different than disappearing for games. <laughs> he disappears for a whole season. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. That that's gonna scare me in the long run. Unless he can keep this consist this play up consistently and like can show me like okay, he can do it again next year. Then mm-hmm. I mean I would say that it's possible for them to win this year. But if he can't keep consistently playing at this level, then they won't win again. He has they have to have him firing on all cylinders. He's an integral mm-hmm. part of their offense, like you said, one of the the second best score on that team, you know. And then Victor number three. So I mean or three or four. So. He has to. He has to stay consistent. I, like I said, he disappeared last season completely. I was like, mm-hmm. "We got to see something." And then he yeah. shows up this season. So, like, mm-hmm. if he's gonna take seasons off and play every other season, then this isn't gonna be a good team going forward. He has to be consistently all the way through. He's gonna. He's mm-hmm. young still. He's gonna reach his prime very soon. We ha- yeah. I have to see him consistently hit that stretch. Mm-hmm. Going yeah, forward, it's, it's it's an interesting one where he is. He's just such a good shot creator for himself. Like it is one man offense when he's on the floor, and I really think that he's just so good at everything he does. And um, I'm a big believer in Tyler, man. So it's 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 this this is a team that just plays good offense, good efficient basketball, and plays lights out defensively. Yeah. So I think this is a good way to get into the next, yep. you know, um, matchup of the East. The so-called Eastern Conference Finals. It's right great. Now. It's a great series. I can say that right now. It is. Boston, Milwaukee Bucks. Oh. Jason, talk to me. All right. Boston, Milwaukee Bucks. I'm gonna tell you, first things first. Um, I chose the Milwaukee Bucks to win the series. Um, I'm a big believer in them. Uh, and I'm a big believer in Giannis. We're talking about how he's the greatest player in the NBA right now. Um what I'm seeing, first things first, uh, the call, that should have been a shooting foul for Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart should have gotten those three free throws. Um, I completely agree with that. And I really think that uh, other than that, the, another thing that should have happened is I think Boston fans are taking things a little bit to an extreme because 
basically everybody's complaining about the refs, but if you're going to play so physical with Giannis, what do you think Giannis is going to be able to do back? Play physical. physical. Mm-hmm. Right? So I thought about this as soon as I saw it. I was like, man, the Boston Celtics are really setting a physical tone, and the refs aren't calling it. So what do you think? It's just you are letting the guy who's the most physically dominant person on the court play physical by setting that tone and mm. you have to accept it you know what i mean it's, it's he's like lebron james if he's on your team and you're a bucks fan you think every single call was missed and Giannis should have been shooting 53 throws last night if you're an opposing team's fan you're thinking to yourself holy crap how are they how are they getting this many calls the refs suck it's the exact same way from LeBron James. I heard Kyle Ray, uh, Kyle Korver talking on a podcast a while back while he was with the Cavs. He said before going over there when he was with Atlanta, there's like, man, LeBron gets all the calls. And then he gets to the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's like, man, LeBron doesn't get any calls compared to what he should be. You know what I mean? It's just the natural reality of sports. Um, yeah. So it, it's it's you got to accept that reality. I don't really think the refs have done a terrible job. It, this this series is just physical. It's a physical series. Um, so it's a, it's a great series. My takeaway is the Boston Celtics are a great team. If they lose this series or the Bucks lose this series, it's no takeaway. Man, this team's just underperformed. I you can't say that at all. Jason Tatum had a bad game. Yeah. So it's not going to keep on happening where he had 14 points. But, you know, the Bucks are up 2-1. It's a big advantage. Um, they needed that game. And the biggest, most important thing is that game three where Giannis had 42, 12, and 8. It's one of the greatest games I've seen in a while. Individual performances. Yeah. There's this point in times, man, where the guy does something ridiculous, you know, Six foot eleven, just Euro stepping, making six foot eight Jason Tatum look so small. He misses the shot; it goes off the rim. He just jumps and puts his hand out there like he's God, and just rips the ball out of the air and just puts it back in. Like some of the stuff he does, man, it's just so wow and ridiculous to an extreme extent. His athleticism, athletic gifts, is insane, and. The Boston Celtics sometimes, when you would see a play over again, they would have four people in the paint, and it would just be Giannis, just like da da da. da I'm gonna get Euro step. I'm gonna Euro step it. I'm gonna dunk. <laughs> like it's just yeah. It's just like he bends, he moves, his legs move in ways they shouldn't be able to, and he scores. <laughs> and it didn't matter. You had four people in there. Who cares? It's two points. It's getting a free throw shot. Like the performance he put on, man. So people have to understand that why he's so amazing is he affects the game at so many high levels. It's insane. He's the best defender on the court all the time, unless he's playing as Draymond Green. He's he's the best rebounder on the court. Nobody ever wants to. You know, I'm surprised he's so great that nobody talks about the fact that he averages like 12 rebounds a game. It is historically relevant rebounder. We have to talk like Moses Malone, Des Rodman, like he, Charles Barkley, you know, he's like kind of mm-hmm. just below that class of rebounders. Like, and then we start talking about passing. Like the guy passes the lights out of the basketball. He has a bunch of like guys that are at your YMCA shooting. All they do is stand still three point shots. Pat Connaughton, Wesley Matthews. He's they're out there winning games just because he could dice you up passing the basketball and all this athletic gifts. So, you know, Giannis, Giannis. Oh man. He put on a light show. He put on a serious performance. Uh, game three it was beautiful it was a great game i had so much fun watching it um and if Giannis beats the boston celtics without chris middleton chris he is the best player in the league and we have to start talking about him top 10 like mm. you know we do our podcast at peak how is he not better than Hakeem? i could never see Hakeem Olajuwon one beating a team like this with that talent and, you know, like, uh, you have to start talking about this thing because he just affects the game in so many ways. And that's my takeaway on the Bucks Celtics. I still think the Bucks are going to take it. It's going to be a great series. I'm going to keep on getting my popcorn ready because it is beautiful to watch. Yeah. I do want to agree with you that they yeah, Marcus Smart should have got those um, free throws. Yes. 
I'm still going to ride with Boston. I mean, it's fun to be, you know, different, to go with the underdog and see if they win it all. Um, mm. But I think that what you say is a great segue into my point uh-huh. of we have seen different eras take shape before our eyes, right? Yes. You know, if we go back through the, you know, history of basketball, the ones that we did, um, you should check those series out where we Great broke series. down the 70s and the 80s and 90s and 2000s, 2010s. You know what I mean? Every We were able to see, like, this was the era of shooting. This is the era of this. was the era of that. Now we get to present day. So here's where I'm going with this. So we've seen how Curry revolutionized and evolutionized the game of basketball completely. Yeah. Undersized guard, shoots lights out, Every team wanted to be like them. Jason made this point earlier in the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. I think that if Giannis goes back to back champion this season, we will see the next evolution of basketball. And Jason, guess where the next evolution comes from? The center position. This will be the reemergence of the center. The center was at one point the most dominant position in basketball everything yeah. came through the center look at the shacks look at the um carl malone's Dreams. look at the the so many so on and so forth with Giannis winning everybody will be looking for a center like Giannis. because what's yes. the main problem with Giannis? Giannis is no unstoppable problem. because there's nobody who can guard him there's nobody mm-hmm. his height his athleticism his speed his quickness his ability nobody yeah. nobody has that mm-hmm. he's he's a uh, unicorn he's an enigma yeah. there it is the word comes out again <laughs> he's an enigma he's, he's he's in a class all his own and this and the fact that he's able to do these things at the height that he is and that he mm-hmm. constantly improves yep. teams will have to look for something to battle back against or he will take this league by storm and it's starting yeah you see the clouds in the in the horizon it's coming <laughs> yeah they mm-hmm. will have to find a way to battle back against him yeah. And that's why I'm saying this will be the reemergence of that position, of the center position. They will find seven footers who have the same level or close to the same level to try to deflect Giannis. Everybody was, Golden State Warriors are the best shooting team. They can shoot the lights out. They'll destroy you with their ball movement. What mm-hmm. the teams do? Teams surrounded their best player with what? Shooters. 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 Cavaliers were never going to... Huh? Go ahead. As the Caval- Cavaliers were never going to break the record for most threes in a game if it wasn't for Steph Curry mm-hmm. and the Golden State Warriors. That would have never happened. That's true. But it did. Yeah. Now with the, the walls breaking down and the center popping back up, this is going to revolutionize and change the game of basketball. Watch. When every decade has a player mm-hmm. that really transcends what we call a normal basketball. Yeah. LeBron, Curry, Mike, Kobe. These are those kind of players who do who who have done these things. Mm-hmm. Giannis is the next one in line. Yeah. You say that he has greatest of all time potential potential. Top yes. five, top three, top player of all time potential. Yes. That's going to change the game of basketball. Yes. We're because you know, look at KD, for example. KD a seven footer we're not gonna lie to you guys he's a seven footer yeah (laughs) ball handling ability can shoot lights out god there are guys who are going to come up in the next couple years who will look exactly like kd seven foot ball handling ability shoot lights out there's a kid you don't think yeah it's already happening you don't think that there won't be kids that look like Giannis that come out of wherever in the world mm-hmm. and plays exactly like him. Somebody's watching. Yeah. Somewhere in the world and analyzing and I can be just like this. This is possible for me to be this player. Look at Cat. Cat was a point guard. And then he grew. <laughs> and then he grew. Anthony Davis, same thing. Point guard. Then he grew. Yep. They shoot lights out. <laughs> yeah, they do. C- c- they're they're it's coming. We're going to see more centers who have the talent, the ability of a Giannis Antetokounmpo, of an Anthony Davis, of a Carl Anthony Towns mixed together, and they're going to take the league by storm. Like I said, you see those clouds there in the horizon. That storm's yeah. brewing. Mm-hmm. It's coming soon. The next evolution is is upon us. Yeah. 
I thought that was a great take, Chris. And there, there's that was such a good take that has multiple things working in my head from that. And you know, one of the things that I personally really think about is you're so correct. Is you when you watch the Boston Celtics, it's like, dude, they you don't have enough size. You may have great wing defenders that shut down Kevin Durant, but you don't have the size and the strength to, to play with Giannis, right? Mm-mm. And you know, the Steph Curry is a great point because Steph Curry made the center position unplayable because you get the switch. What are you going to do? You can't do anything. He's on an island. Steph Curry is going to expose them, right? And they were a winning team, so everybody had to adapt. Now, Giannis is transitioning the game back to, dear goodness, we need seven footers that can block Giannis, challenge Giannis out to the Kumpo at the rim. We can't, we can't have six foot nine Al Holford out here anymore, right? And think about LeBron James. Why was we really need three and D wings? Why did everybody talk about that? Oh, because you had to guard LeBron, right? Yeah. If you if you had somebody over there that can't guard LeBron James, you can't put him on the floor. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. It, why do why do we need Roy Hibbert? Remember Roy Hibbert. Oh my gosh, Joe Keen Noah. Both in the same conference as the Cavs. Why? Because they needed the size at the rim. You can't yeah. beat LeBron without size. Look, look at that. We did the greatest upsets of all time podcast. We talk about the D- Dallas Mavericks. They had seven foot Dirk next to the best defensive player of that season, which is Tyson Chandler, who was six foot eleven, blocking all those shots. Look yeah. at the Spurs when they beat him. Tiago Splitter, Tim Duncan, seven foot, seven foot. You need length to challenge these people into for these teams, they have to adjust. Teams in the East will probably be like, we need centers now. We need seven footers. We 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 need need these guys because we can't stop that freak over there. His name's Greek freak, his name's Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, so I th- feel like that was a great point. And another thing that's a nice uh, little um, thing here is it's very reminiscent of MJ patching the torch to Kobe, where MJ and Kobe were basically clones, but MJ was much more athletic. Now, I'm not mm-hmm. saying LeBron is much more athletic than Giannis, even though I would say he is more athletic, but Giannis is taller, so they kind of even out. But they play very similarly. That's the point. And the baton is being passed. We're witnessing it. And they're so similar in play style. And and that you're right. The influence of Giannis is going to pass the torch to somebody else that's like that. Um, and... It, it's it's a beautiful thing about basketball, and you're right. It's it's everybody's gonna have to move and transition into different things. Like another thing in the 2000s is we had Dirk, Tim Duncan, and um, Kevin Garnett all in the same Western Conference, and Pau Gasol and Andrew Bynum in the Western Conference with Kobe. Like everybody needed power forwards and centers that were big because yeah. you can't beat the best three teams if you don't have the size. The Suns got destroyed by the the Spurs every year when they had Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire because they couldn't beat the Spurs because, like, we can't do anything with those size. And um, it's just, it's a matchup league. It's always been that way. And even look at the time frame with Shaq. I mean, how many people needed to be huge when it's 2000, 1990, 1999, and Shaq is destroying everybody and you need two bodies. You know, Ben Wallace, six foot nine, built out of granite. Um, you know what I mean? Guys like Vladdy Divac, you know, guys that are big bodies to try to play with Shaq. Like the greatest players influence the NBA because you have to stop them. And, yeah. you know, we're witnessing a league that's shifting to more of a size league because you got to stop Giannis. Like the East is going to shift. It's, it's going to be a lot of teams where it's like, we need a center. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's. It's a really interesting. It's a really good point you brought up, Chris. Yeah, it's definitely that's definitely where the NBA is heading. Um, yeah. I'm not. It's, it's still going to have the high level of shooting yeah. that it does, but it's going to it's going to really be centered on can we stop Giannis? Mm-hmm. That's how our teams are going to be built. Exactly, how our teams mm-hmm. are going to be built. It's like can we stop Giannis? Like look at the Atlanta Hawks from last year. Like you know, remember we said that the Atlanta Hawks had a had a yeah. potential, you know, a b- potential to beat the Bucks. Yeah. But as you look at those games, yeah. Clint Capella's at the rim. <laughs> They're playing small ball all 48 minutes, you know? No. No. So, of course, they're going to get I dismantled mean, by Giannis. Giannis is going to destroy him every time. There's, there's nobody in the league that can guard Giannis. 
Yeah. So he's going to change the game. It's, it's Giannis and Luca's league for the next five years. Yeah, and he is, the game will be changed forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It. This is actually great, you know, in comparison to the point that you made earlier about how you said that the game mm-hmm. is moving is is evolving backwards about how with the ball movement, you know what I mean, the highly defensive, highly def- highly talented defensively teams. Yeah. This is now it's moving toward the sent back toward the center. Now you have highly defensively talented teams with a great center, athletic center. Now mm-hmm. it's evolving backwards, but also yeah. evolving forward. And I, as I well, think a beautiful thing about that Giannis athletic back center, but Giannis too. put it He's put Giannis in that category. Now, now center. you're looking it's, at a totally different Giannis NBA. Is just a demigod, honestly. He came from the heavens to destroy yeah. people. <laughs> Yes, spacing galore. And that team is built great for him, though, too, as well. Um, because spacing galore, and mm-hmm. think about it, that's another thing that's going to change these teams. Looking like Watch. the Toronto Raptors. This team wins again. <laughs> Every team will have players 6 9 and up. All positions. Yeah. That's what the Bucks look like. Uh-huh. Yeah. The Toronto Raptors yeah. probably were like the best, like compare. It were like the probably the best team to yeah. go against them because they have size to match, except for at Giannis's position. But yeah. other than that, I like agree. all teams will so look like that from now. You, on. Uh, they will all be super tall, super tall, super lanky, super athletic, the and can shoot lights out. Yeah. Uh, Western Conference Finals. I have the Warriors versus the Suns still. Uh, um, no, I really, no, I don't. I really think that that's what, do what, what do you have? What do you have going for it? Going to win that series. I think that they're just hitting a great peak right now, where this they're just untouchable as a team. So I'm going to go Warriors versus Suns. Warriors winning the West. I have the Heat facing the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis makes the greatest. Uh, wins that series. And what about your Eastern and pick? He runs out of firepower. I, I think that the Miami Heat will beat the Bucks in seven. And I think the Miami Heat will beat the Golden State Warriors in seven. Because they match up with the Golden State Warriors in the worst way. It would be the worst matchup the Golden State Warriors have ever faced because of Bam. Because of that center position. Because they're so switchable. They're the worst matchup for guards. Look at what they did to Trey. Look what they did to James Harden. I mean, their lives are living hell. The best three players on the Warriors are all guards. It's it's going to be a, like in Draymond Green. Yeah, he can probably guard Jimmy Butler, but you know, it, it's it's not like a great matchup for Dre, where Trey's just going to be able to shut down a ton of stuff. So, I'm right now I'm leaning Miami Heat. I'm just going to have to see them play a few more games before I really feel super confident about that. Okay. Um I What? Really? Say Okay. I want to rock with the Grizzlies. I'm going to continue to rock with the Grizzlies. I'm going to live in I'm going to live and die on this shit. You know, if they if they lose then, you know, I was wrong. I'm going to continue to rock with them. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to live and die on this one. Um I have Heat beating the Sixers, of course. So Heat yeah. Bucks. I have Bucks winning. Yeah. If Bucks, amazing. if it's Bucks, Memphis Bucks, I, Golden I, State, you know, I have Bucks winning. The Bucks go back to back. Giannis two rings in. Um, and it's it's going to be so yeah. much fun because these teams are so close. You know, Boston could win the East. Milwaukee could win the East. Heat could win the East. You know, the Suns and the Warriors, in my opinion, can win the West and. You know, this, the the Warriors are probably the best team. I just think the worst matchup out of the East for them is the Miami Heat. Because if the thing of the Boston Celtics is like you don't have the defensive – Robert Wood's a good defender, but, like, this, it's not like a guard-stopping team. You know what I mean? Like, they have Marcus Smart, but he can guard one of them. It's just too much firepower. It's too efficient of a basketball. And if they face the Milwaukee Bucks, I, I do think that Draymond Green versus Giannis Antetokounmpo – would be a terrible matchup for Giannis, and I think that 
would make the Warriors beat the Bucks. So I have the Warriors winning the NBA Finals as long as they don't face the Heat, who just would match up terribly with them. Yeah, that's my take. Yeah. It's going to be fun, though. It's going to be must-watch TV, and it's going to be much watched podcast time. Yeah. You guys are going to have to check out all oh, this fair. great I can, stuff I can we're going to be talking about. Because next time we talk about a podcast, though, this, this round's going to be over. We're going to be talking yeah. about... Who's going to win the Eastern Conference, Western Conference Finals? And then we'll probably be doing for the NBA Finals, yeah. like p- uploads every day, every game, right? Or something like that. We did that last year, so probably just something like that. So it's going to be a fun time for you guys as basketball addicts. You know, join the join the wave. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think so. You got anything else you want to say? No, I feel like we dropped a good one today. Yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. nope do you yes yes (laughs) perfect all righty yeah so thank you all for listening and uh, thank you for you know coming and welcome to the yeah we really have a goal right now to try to reach that five star (laughs) rating thank you thank you for listening so apple Um, music can wreck apple you want to tell uh, them about the um about our goal and spotify can recognize us and we can start seeing some growth there and so other people can see oh my gosh we love that podcast oh it's growing oh my gosh it's five star podcast like we we really do uh value guys input we're really trying to grow um and we want you guys to be a part of the journey of oh my gosh i listened to those guys within the first year of their podcast i was one of those early people in the basketball addicts podcast they're so crazy right now you know what i mean like in 10 years we could be you know where, where could we be in 10 years chris <laughs> i mean you know what there is a place that i think we would fit really well at and uh, one of them we could is be the most Barstool watched Sports. podcast. I could see us on Barstool Sports, we could. Um, or uh, you know, mm-hmm. I could see us working for. There's a lot of places that have podcasts that like host podcasts. You know what I mean? So I could see us having some sort of deal. Where we're working with some some form of entity. I mean, I feel like my dream job personally mm-hmm. would be. Uh, other than work, <laughs> yeah, I could I could see Ball's life. I could see NBA TV, NBA TV. If we had a show on that, that'd be pretty cool. That would be like a dream. Ball's life, stuff. yeah. Uh, but I think what my I think my dream, I think my dream would probably be in the front office being a scout. Oh, you know, I feel like that would probably be my dream. But like podcast related, it'd be gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah growing this and see where we go yes. blue check famous, <laughs> star on we're the like the Yana fan, Santa you know what I mean? we have we're that kind of potential you're listen 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 you're early <laughs> to the goat podcast <laughs> yeah i it's yeah it's it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a fun ride uh, we magic and bird right now tiktok is growing and it's a it's it definitely a uh a time frame of growth that we're in right now and just never going to forget it. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. We appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. It's very exciting. Very exciting time for us. Very exciting time for all of our mm-hmm. fans out there. So we just want to say once again, you heard it that first. and thank you. <laughs> thank you. Cause we wouldn't be where we are or on the level of growth that we were, that we're at yep. now without you guys. So thank um, you. Just- yeah. Alrighty. I think that's enough. So my name is Chris Muhammad. I'm Jason Collins. And we're the basketball addicts.